One man declared a suppressive person was Marcus Allen. He was chairman of the trustees of Greenfield School near East Grinstead. Though the school says it's independent, it's run by Scientologists. It boasts charitable status in the prospectus. This means substantial cash benefits through tax relief. Marcus Allen became increasingly hostile to the cult because of its demand for total loyalty. He was finally summoned to a meeting at St. Hill Manor, where he says two senior officials presented him with reports on his behavior written by other Scientologists. They cross-examined him, then accused him of associating with opponents of the cult. I was asked if I would uh, stop seeing these people. I said no, I choose my own friends, and I would see the people I chose to see. On that response, they said, well, if you wish to continue seeing these people, you may do so. But we want to know all the conversations you have with them. You must report back to us what is said and who these other people see. I declined the option and left. I was being asked to spy on my friends, which I found extremely distasteful. And from an organization which uh, calls itself a church, I find this uh, almost unbelievable. Soon after that meeting, Marcus Allen's 14-year-old son, Alexander, was drawn into the dispute. He was about to sit his O-levels at Greenfields. But the day after his father was declared a suppressive, Alexander was called to a meeting with the headmistress and her deputy. I was waiting in the office to go home, and Margaret Hawken and uh, Mark McQuaid walked in, and, and they sat down at the, at the desk and said just very simply, um, until the situation with your father, with Scientology, had been cleared up, it would be best for me to stay at home. The headmistress, Margaret Hodkin, claimed that Alexander was sent home because his stammer had become worse. She denied he'd been expelled. But Marcus Allen complained his son had been made a scapegoat. I said this was totally outrageous, that a child could be victimized in this way. So there I was, 15 minutes before the new, d new term was due to begin. My son had no school to go to. I had no satisfactory explanation as to why he had been, in effect, expelled. The experiences I had uh, been through as a result of Greenfield School and Scientology served really to confirm the belief I'd had that for me to uh, remove myself from any association with Scientology was the correct decision. Marcus Allen and other critics are determined to expose just what Scientology means. But every day, new people are still being recruited to the cause. It's business as usual at St. Hill today. Even disenchanted ex-members concede that Scientology can help some people. But they say it's obsessed with making money and suppressing opposition, and that families are too often the victims of their loved one's blind faith. Families like the Lillies, they recall the joyous moment when their daughter Lissa came home having apparently decided to leave the cult, but she didn't stay. Roger Kay from the Brighton Scientology Centre followed her to the house. When John Lilly told him Lissa might never go back, the Scientologist wasn't satisfied. Roger Kay um, said, well, if, if, you know, if that was the case, it was, it was very serious and he would have to consider how much money um, our daughter owed uh, for all the courses that she'd had. Uh, I that infuriated me and I said well righto then uh, Roger write it down write it down now and then I shall submit my account to you for all that time and hours that she has worked for you for nothing and I and my figure will be more than yours it didn't happen of course uh, we shouldn't have allowed her you see we should have physically stopped her but you don't do that sort of thing she went back and then the whole thing starts over again very sad <laughs>